Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great week. As part of my co-op, I've been doing some research on the Rhino Grasshopper connection with Archicad. Um, there's a really good video on YouTube that explains one way this tool can be used. Um, so I'll give a quick context and I'll play about 20 minutes of this clip. Um, and hopefully this gives a, a great overview uh, to start, but it's also a, a great video to watch in, in its entirety as well. So this is uh, the grasshopper window. It looks something like this with uh, nodes uh, connected by wires. Grasshopper is a visual coding software that manipulates Rhino geometry. Rhino is a 3D modeling software like ArchiCAD, um, except it creates geometry using something called NURBS curves, and uh, this is different than and meshes um, and other types of 3D modeling, uh, 3D model elements, uh, types that you know of. Uh, so in ArchiCAD, we have GDL, um, but it allows for um, very freeform elements. <laughs> so a lot of industrial designers, jewelry designers, and now architects, boat, boat makers, um, airplane designers, et cetera, uh, use Rhino to create their, I'd say not their detailed models, but their freeform models. And then GraphiSoft has created this tool uh, that allows for a bi-directional connection between ArchiCAD and Rhino and Grasshopper, um, which is awesome because you can, at any stage of a project, bring that project into Rhino and Grasshopper, do analysis, do something, uh, something that would be very fast in that software, and then send it back to ArchiCAD. Um, and you could also create something in Rhino Grasshopper and send it to ArchiCAD, um, vice versa. So uh, in this example, what he's doing is he's running a sunlight analysis on this building, which he's designed in ArchiCAD, um, but he's running the analysis using Grasshopper and he's using an open source tool set called Ladybug Tools. There's lots of users, Grasshopper users um, in the world and they create a lot of open source plugins that are really great and a lot of big firms use them to their advantage because they're free. Um, and it takes a little bit of knowledge of programming, I'd say, to be able to manipulate um, Grasshopper the, to get it to work uh, the way you want it to, to, to create the tools that you want to use. Uh, but it's not too hard. Uh, it's much easier than writing uh, code as text, uh, I find. So, what he's going to do is he's running this sunlight analysis on this building, and then he's designed a, a profile of a curtain, and he's bringing that curtain into Grasshopper, and then he's going to apply the curtain along the, uh, the glass facade all the way across like this and send it back to our GCAD. Um, and then he's going to rerun the sunlight analysis uh, to see how the, the exposure of sunlight to the building has changed. So he's hoping to get more blue on this glass facade. So I'll play this quickly and hopefully you can hear the audio. Okay, so I've created a, an example tool um, using Grasshopper that would apply to MMMC's projects. So I think it's my understanding that it's, it's quite useful to have 
site context in ArchiCAD early on for massing and for um, early design decisions. So here is an example of the Trinity Village Care Center um, and that MMMC is currently creating site context for. And I'm gonna use uh, this Grasshopper tool uh, to generate that site context in ArchiCAD in 3D um, and just uh, really fast and, and very accurately. To do that, I'm going to export a section from OpenStreetMap of that site. An OpenStreetMap is essentially an open source version of Google Maps where you can download and extract the data. Um, so we're getting building height data, where is a park, where is parking lots, where the roads are, where the buildings and houses are. Um, there's a wiki that has all the information you can extract. Um, and I can just scroll anywhere and look at something. So you can tell whether a building's a bungalow, a cabin, etc. And this list goes on and on and on. You can even see here these green and purple lines. Um, and they're kind of waving their way through the city. These, this is actually um, public GPS data from, from people's cars. Another file we can get open source is pretty accurate topographic information for a large area. I'm using NASA's SRTM um, data, which, uh, which is open source now. Um, and we can use this website, Earth Explorer, to download a huge section of Southern Ontario. And it's about a uh, 10 megabyte file. And then to get all of this to work, of course you need um, Rhino, so you could do a free, you could use a free trial, or we could install it on the machine, and then you just download a, a small plugin for both Rhino and for Grasshopper from these websites, and install those. I just thought I'd quickly mention that um, Graphisoft and their newest version of ArchiCAD has tried to create um, a simplified version of Grasshopper to create um, ArchiCAD objects. And they're also experimenting with uh, Python support. So what I will show you in my example could be uh, translated into a, a Python script, which then could just run directly in ArchiCAD without Grasshopper and uh, Rhino. Here's my Grasshopper window and here's my Rhino window. And um, this is the definition that I've created. It looks like an organized mess, but um, it's actually quite simple. If it's here, you just need to set that topographic file that you've downloaded, and here you'd set your OpenStreetMap file that you downloaded. And after a few seconds, it will create um, a version of that in Rhino. Um, these contour lines are getting pulled from the topographic mesh, which I can display um, here. Um, here in ArchiCAD, we can uh, go up to File, Interoperability, and click Grasshopper Connection, and click Start Connection. Once that's made the connection, uh, you'll see this green spinning wheel, and it's ref you'll see the file path of the Grasshopper file that you're referencing. Okay, now because I'm filming on one screen, uh, I'm going to move these screens over to another monitor and you'll just see the ArchiCAD window, but uh, you're going to see the geometry pop into the ArchiCAD window and I just want to explain how that happens. Here in the Grasshopper file, um, all of that geometry through these nodes here, which is part of the ArchiCAD tool set here, um, they're this is translating that Rhino geometry into ArchiCAD elements, such as slabs, morphs, um, polylines, etc. cetera. Um, and we're also setting details such as the, the material or the composite, uh, the layer, uh, the reference plane, et cetera. Um, anything that you can do in terms of these settings in ArchiCAD, you can do in ahead of time in Grasshopper. And then you can always change the, the values very easily. Okay, so I'm going to start by bringing in the topography. So 
So here we go. And in 2D, I'll bring in the uh, contours. And I'm actually going to change those. So I'm making all these changes that actually you can't see, but this is in uh, run or in Grasshopper. So I'm just going to change the line color to red. Okay. Uh, next, I'll bring in uh, the highways and the roads. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to hide this layer. Next, I'll bring in the buildings. I'll bring in the site just as a bounding box. I'll bring in any of the any parking lots it's found. And I'll bring in any uh, recreational areas that it's found. The last thing I can do is uh, part of the definition that I haven't uh, worked on too much, but that's uh, bring in information um, as a tag. So I'm going to tag the streets, but you could tag buildings uh, as uh, what type of building they are. But I'm just going to bring in tags as street names. And obviously, it would look nicer to adjust these street names, um, font, and everything so that they align with the roads. And if this is something uh, that you'd be interested in using, I can I can adjust that. Um, Okay, so that's how this works. And uh, you just then be able to, of course, you always have to make some edits, um, but all of these elements are now in ARCHICAD and can be adjusted in ARCHICAD. So I'll quickly show like for this uh, path here, uh, all we have to do to edit this now is click break the connection, go up to edit, locking and unlock, and just click yes. And now we can edit this as a, a slab. Something like that, for instance. OK, um, the last thing I'll do is I'll bring in the uh, Google Earth background and uh, just to see how accurate this is. OK, so I just brought in. The, a Google Earth screenshot of that site actually um, to see what geometry we're missing or if we need to change thicknesses. Um, and I've obviously placed it, it looks like a bit too too high or sorry, too low. Um, but it also could be skewed because it's uh, coming from a, uh, a satellite. And yeah, uh, so it's pretty accurate. You can see it's missing some information like the houses here. Um, but other than that, uh, that would be easy to to create. Um, and yeah, so I hope I hope that was a useful overview of how this of this research and how it, how it works to be able to create your own tools uh, for your workflow. Um, and obviously now you could uh, cut this into a a square or something like that and three D print it very easily. Um, so. That'd be one option. Um, but also, you could now pick a little piece out of here and start designing, building. And instead of building on this spot site, maybe you'd build it on the, the topographic uh, piece. I hope that was uh, helpful. Thanks.